Glory to God. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. What a blessed Sunday it is this morning. We are alive and we are here once more to lift our voices and praise to the Lord and to read the word and to hear the word of God this morning, to hear what the Lord has to say for us during this time. And we're just so happy that you're here. We're going to go on to our Bible reading for today, which is taken from Isaiah chapter 40. And we're reading from verses 18 to 31. Follow along and read aloud with us. Let the word of God penetrate your heart this morning and the atmosphere where you are. Amen. With whom then will you compare God? To what image will you liken him? As for an idol, craftsman cast it, and goldsmith overlays it with gold, and fashions silver chains for it. A person too poor to present such an offering selects wood that will not rot. They look for a skilled worker to set up an idol that will not topple. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground than he blows on them and they wither, and the whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens who created all these. He who brings out the starry host one by one, and calls for each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my cause is discarded by my God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But, but those who hope in the Lord will renew, renew their, their strength. strength. They, they will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. atmosphere is charged with your presence and so this morning as we come to worship and praise we just adore you we give you glory this morning oh hallelujah we call you by name Yahweh great mighty and powerful one you are the one who caused us Lord to wake up this morning you caused us to be here Lord in our right minds 
present, oh Father, to worship you on this, the Lord's day. And so we are grateful, we are grateful, oh God, for health, for strength, for life. We are grateful, oh Father, Lord, for every good gift that we know comes from you, Lord God. Despite the storms raging around us, dear Lord, despite the circumstances sometimes that are, you know, not quite what we want, dear Lord God, we put our trust in you as the captain of our ship, oh Father, Lord God, because where your ship is sailing, we know, dear Lord, it is into victory. Oh Father Lord, your word tells us that we are more than conquerors, oh God, through Christ Jesus. And this is what we're believing today. Father, as we just give the service over to you today, the word that is to be spoken on, oh God, the songs of worship as we lift them up, oh Father Lord God. I pray that you may receive our worship this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that the word of God that goes forth will accomplish that for which is set forth, oh Father Lord God, and to change the hearts and minds of your Lord God, of those who will be listening in right now or later on. Oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus, there may be some listening in today not feeling well oh father but we right now we understand that you are the bomb in gilead for the sin sick soul we understand father lord god that it is by your power that we can be healed a hallelujah as g as yeshua walked through the earth oh father lord and he touched and he healed and he says to us that if we have faith even in the grain of mustard seed we can move mountains lord we ask you to move some mountains in people's life today oh father lord god a mountain dear father lord of sickness be gone in the name of jesus we believe dear Lord for those who are believing with us in prayer today for healing and deliverance oh Father Lord in the mighty name of Jesus oh God those who have a need today Lord God we know Father Lord God that Lord all our needs can be supplied all our needs can be supplied oh Father Lord God because dear Lord God you are the great supplier way maker miracle worker a promise keeper hallelujah we pray for sub sub supplying of every need today dear Father Lord whatever dear Father Lord issue that someone is bringing today oh God as we worship and as we praise Father God I pray that you may bring an answer for them today Lord Father Lord bless each and every one oh God who will take part in this service today especially those who are listening in wherever they are right now we pray a special blessing on their life on their families life on their home today oh God their businesses their workplaces Lord that everything they set their hand to in the mighty name of Jesus will prosper in Jesus name Amen Amen, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Sister Rosie. Praise the Lord. Well, good morning if it's morning where you are. Good evening if it's evening or good night. Wherever in this universe you are, it's a blessed time because God is still God. Uh, this is Floyd Antonio representing the Citadel Incorporated from down here in sunny Florida. And I just want to say to you, thank you. Welcome, welcome. Reach out now. There is still time to send a message out or a text or a quick call to someone and tell them to join us right here on Facebook Live as we spend these next few moments in worship. I just want to welcome you on behalf of all of us who are connected to the Citadel Incorporated. And my prayer and strong conviction is that you will be blessed if your heart is in the right place. So let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And remember when this uh, program is finished, when this service is finished, share it. Share it via Facebook. Share it uh, via WhatsApp. Uh, share it. Share it. Because the message of the Lord is worth sharing. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is no other name but the name of Jesus. And that's the name we are worshiping today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Sing along with us and make sure that we have the words so everybody can join in. Peace. 
hills, from whence our help comes. Our help comes from the Lord God Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. We know that Jesus sits on the right hand of God, the Bible tells us, making intercession for us. Oh,
He's worthy of honor. He's worthy of praise. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to bow down and to worship you. We thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us day after day, night after night. Thank you for the seasons that you have caused us to experience over and over. Spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Oh, would that we were able to find a more powerful word. But thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you have done for us. Thank you for the gift of salvation through your Son, Jesus, who is the Christ. We thank you and we bless you. And now, Lord, as we seek to feast on what you will say to us through your word, I ask, oh, Father, that you would allow me to decrease so that you will speak through me and speak your word to your people. And I pray, oh, God, for a receptive heart and a willingness to obey. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts collectively be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. From Sunshine State of Florida, Floyd Antonio here saying one more time, welcome and thank you so much for taking time out to join us this morning. We will worship the Lord and we will praise Him no matter what. In this life, we will praise Him. Those of us who know him, who have accepted, accepted him, we declare that we will praise him in the life after this life. Thank you. I want to start a short series on the power and the purpose of a name. The power and purpose of a name. This year for us at the Citadel is the year of reconnection. So those of you who have been connected, rekindle, fortify your connection. Those who have not yet done so, it's our prayer that you get connected. Any ordinary person will know, will understand, will accept that a name is simply a set of words by which a person, animal, place, or a thing is known, addressed, or referred to. That's your name. I don't want to go into the etymological aspects of the term word, except to say that it is rooted in an old English word, uh, nema. Some, in some circles, it's noma, as in N-O-M-A. If you are from Germany, it's gonna be connected with the term Namian. If you're a Dutch, it could be Naham. I'm not speaking Jamaican to say Niam, but it's N-E-A-M if you are of Dutch. And these, this term, the word name, is rooted into German, into Dutch. And they share that common root or word heritage uh, with Latin and Greek. So the Latin term nomen will be familiar. The Greek is uh, onoma, O-N-O-M-A, name. So here is statement number one for us this morning as we kick off this reflection on the purpose and power of a name. Statement number one, everything has a name. As soon as it is identified, if it doesn't have a name, one is given. Think about it. Everything has a name. And if you look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 19, you will see where Adam named things. And whatever he named a thing, that was what it was. That was what it was known as. Name. So everything has a name. <laughs> the second thing I want to say this morning as we move on 
is that every name has a meaning. Yes, every name has a meaning. And because of that, I want to encourage us to think about the names we give our children. Because names can bring about negative uh, connotation or pictures of it. When you take, for, in my own experience, I've encountered people <laughs> with the name of Savage. I remember one of my, a high school teacher of mine, his name was John Crow. I've encountered people with names like Delilah. Now, because of my Western grooming, Savage implies that there is somebody with some barbaric appearance or attitude. Uh, 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 when you think of John Crow, I'm thinking of a scavenger. Or Delilah, I'm thinking of Samson and Delilah, how it was, he, uh, he was allegedly deceived by Delilah. Name. Another thing I want to pause here to say about name before I go any further is that sometimes people will try to rename you or simply try to give you a nickname. It's bad if the nickname is bad. If it's not such a negative thing, it's okay. So if somebody's Pamela and you call them Pam, that's okay. Where I grew up, if somebody used to faint away regularly, they just change the person's name and call them faint away. Or if the person talked too much, they would call the person Laba, nickname, pseudonym. But I, want, I say this to say that we have to be careful when people start to rebrand us or rename you. Come on. If they give you a name that is going to bring about the negative aspects because names can be negative. If they're going to try to tell you a name that means you're no good, you're good for nothing, you're worthless. That rebranding, may I say to you here, even if you don't verbalize your opposition, just say to yourself, I'm rejecting that. It's negative. They are rebranding me. They are calling me a slave, and I'm not a slave. They are calling me a name that means worthlessness, and I'm not, uh, because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. So this is who I am. I know who I am. I'm saying to somebody today, don't let somebody rebrand you in a negative way. Yes. Refuse it. Thank you, Lord. Of course, if names can bring up negative uh, pictures or imagery or thoughts, names can also be positive. Amen? I hear the church say. So when I think of a rose, I think of my wife, and I, I'm thinking that her parents must have been in a fantastic mood when they gave her a name. As far as I'm concerned, she's the most beautiful woman I've ever met. Rose. I think of names like heaven. That's a flower. How about Monica? Which stems from the Latin word which means uh, advisor. I have a sister by that name, by the way. How about Carol? Joyous song. That's the meaning of that name. Marcy is another name that, uh, well, I have to be careful because for Marcia, it's, a, it's connected with a mythical, mythical Roman god of fertility. And um, that was identified with the Greek god of war, Ares. How about my name? My name is Floyd. And I'm having proof of that name now because they tell me that uh, it's a Welsh name and it simply means gray-haired, which matches my first sister's name, Monica which means advisor. How about my second name, Antonio? I love that name. Some say it's Spanish, some say it's Italian. It's my name. But um, in my research, it means priceless. So my rose has a priceless husband. Beautiful. Names can be positive. So let me stop for a moment. Let's reason. What is your name? Yes. Tell me your name. What is your name? While you answer, your name is what people know you by. They call you by your name. You answer. Now, why is this ministry that we are coming to you from called the Citadel? 
We are talking about names this morning, so we're going to reflect a little bit. It's called the citadel because the word citadel means a fortress, a place situated on a high plateau. It's elevated so it can stand watch God over a city, citadel. It is uh, similar to words which are connected scripturally to Acre or Accra. Let me just pause for you history students and just tell you quickly that in biblical setting, they call it the intertestamental series of studies. You, you won't find what I'm telling you literally in the Bible, but the Acre, AKA, some people spell it A-C-R-A, -A, um, it really was an ancient Greek or Hebrew word um, for a place in Jerusalem. And um, different rulers, including Solomon, used that higher position place. And if you have studied the Maccabean um, history, you will also know that uh, the Acre is a fortress. Another name that is connected with the Bible is Megiddo, M-E-G-E-D-O. That's a fortress. So it's a hilltop Canaanite city back then. Uh, it was an Egyptian fortress. Uh, a chariot city built in biblical times. And uh, yes, Megiddo was ruled by King Solomon some uh, 10, the, during the 10th century before Christ was born. Names, a name is powerful. A name can be strong. A name can bring life. A name can be demeaning. Now then, let's go back to church this morning and I want us to talk just for a few minutes on one word yes. the word is God G-O-D any person who goes to school will understand that God has to do with a being or a thing worshipped by man the word God can simply be a title however so let's look at it in two senses one, in some certain religion, God is simply a superhuman being or spirit worshipped and having power over nature or human fortunes, a deity, God. In Christendom, in the Christian sense of the word, God has to do with and not only Christianity, but those religions that deal with a monotheistic God, the one God. God refers to the creator, ruler of the universe. He is the source of all moral authority. He is declared, accepted, and worshipped as the supreme being. And when we read this morning, Isaiah 40, verses 18 through to 31, it, 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 we should go back and read that who he is. He is the one who spoke the universe into existence. He, he gathers this, the, the, the seasons of the year. This is the God of the Christ followers. This is the God of heaven and earth, the one to whom we subscribe. He's the one we worship. Stay with me this morning. I am submitting to you this morning that this God is really the only true God. Please forgive me. I cannot back down from that. He alone can love us so much so that he would give his only begotten son so that we could live. He's the only God who loves us so much that he can cause us to live, not only in this life, but in a life afterwards. And some people mistake their idols. They call the idols God. I am reminded of a story you can read it in your own time in numbers 21 verses 4 to 9 when the children of israel disobeyed god and the fiery serpents were sent and they were being stung to death and moses called on the lord the, the, god told moses rather to carve out make a serpent and stick it up out there in the wilderness not for people to worship but so that when they look on the serpent they would not die from the venomous bite of the serpent. That typified something that was supposed to be manifested over in the New Testament. We're still talking about the name of God who 
who reveals things as time goes by. It is this same God, the one we talk about John in John 3, 16 and 17 over and over. This same God who loved the world so much that he gave his son so that whosoever believes on his son uh, will live forever. And this same God, the next verse tells us, we mentioned it last week, verse 17 of John chapter 3, that this God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. This is why this Christ not only died, but he, had, he was raised from the dead. He became the first fruit of those who literally died in the flesh and came back to life. And so since through his death and his resurrection, there is new life. That is why we have life today. It is this God that we're talking about who reversed the curse when all died through the first Adam. He reversed the curse through Yeshua Mashiach, the second Adam, the Jesus who is the Christ, uh, so that you and I can live. This is the God. I, I'm not going very far this week. I'm going to be stopping shortly. It is this God. So now I repeat a question that I asked earlier. What is your name? Another question I want to ask you this morning. What is the meaning of your name? Or to tie to that, what is the purpose of your name? I dare say that your name should be connected with a meaning, a powerful, positive meaning. I want to say this morning that your name should be connected to purpose. That is your name. So what is your name? Ah, this morning I, I am not so concerned about the name given to you by your mother or your father. Come on. Because regardless of what that name is, regardless of what it means at, at this present time, it doesn't matter how good, how powerful, how well known, how famous that name is right now. If that is not the name that is connected in the right setting, then you may need to change your name. And I'm going to say right at this point that you can change your name without changing your name. Okay, now don't lose me here. When I say change your name, my name, your name, could be associated with sin, failure, frustration, things negative. You just name it. You can change your name when you change your thought process. You can change your name when you find a powerful meaning for it. You can change your name when your name is connected to a divine purpose which seeks to advance the cause of the kingdom and the human race. You won't have to go and do a deep poll when you literally change your name on your birth certificate. You need not alter it then because there's a statement which people speak all the time, by their fruit you shall know them. Has anybody ever walked up to you and said to you, oh, that's a nice person. That's your name talking. Or they walk up to you and say, oh, that person, it's such an encouragement just talking with that person, just being in that person's presence. Has, a, has somebody ever walked up to you and say, without you even mentioning the name Yeshua or Christ or God or church or anything, you probably were just talking or you were just sitting there or you just commented on something simple. And they said, You've got to be a daughter of Zion. You've got to be a son of the Most High. That's your name talking there. You can choose to fix your name if you have not yet done so. Because if you change your name in the setting that I speak this morning, you will change your destiny. You will change it from what the enemy plans for you. I can tell you, it's no secret. The enemy plans to steal everything that you have, to rob you, to kill you, and to destroy you. That's his plan. But Yeshua, Jesus the Christ said, I am called that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So if you haven't changed your name, it's a simple message that I seek to deliver. Some of you know it, but you will have to deliver it to somebody before this week is over. So this is why I know the Lord wants me to tell you that there can be power yes. and purpose in a name when it's 
correctly connected power and purpose can be in your name. No matter how powerful you think you are right now, if it's not in line with the kingdom demands and dictates, then your name needs to be realigned. You need to reconnect your name to the kingdom. Let me tell you this. It, it's worth repeating. God can redefine your name. Yes. He can give you a new name. Yes, people will still know you as John. They might still know you as Mark. They may still know you as Marcia. But when you give your life over to him, he can change your name. Oh, there may be people here looking at me now who knew me once upon a time, a long time ago. And they will say, well, I knew Floyd when he was... If you can't find anything that was so godly, I'm not saying I'm perfect. If you look, you will find something. But that was then. This is now. I declare to you this morning that God has given me a new name. Not because I'm good or great, but because I chose to accept his salvation through his son. God can redefine your name. If you haven't done so, it's not a complicated thing. You just have to decide in your mind and ask him. Say, Lord, I don't know much about you, but if I, I've been trying to find out about you and the head knowledge thing is not working perfectly for me. So by faith, I'm coming to you this morning and I'm asking you to come into my heart, my mind, my soul, my spirit, my entire being. Change my life. So that my name can have a new meaning. God can redefine your name. He can put real meaning and purpose to your name. Your name can become truly powerful when your name falls in line with the purpose and the power of God. The God who is the maker of heaven and earth. I'm just talking about God this morning. This is the introduction. I'm trying not to say so much so that you cannot remember what I've said. So in a nutshell, before I close this morning, I want to remind you. Listen. A name is what is the embodiment of a thing or a person. It is what they use to refer to you. The name can bring about a positive sentiment or feeling. It can be bring about something negative that nobody wants you to be near. Yes, people can try to rename you or rebrand you. You will decide if you will accept their new name. But God wants to give you a new name and he can redefine you. Because regardless of what name you have, when the God of all creation, the God who spoke heaven and earth into existence, the one who is enthroned there, the one who has the earth has his footstool. The God who is here, there, and everywhere. The God who is omnipresent, omnipotent, and the one who knows it all, the omniscient one. There is power in his name. And he can transmit that power and purpose to your life, to my life. Will you accept him today? This is the message I'm asking you, so-called Christians, kingdom citizens, to take to somebody this week. Tell them about the name. And I'm going to stop here for this morning. This is just the introduction. Let me not be known for my long, much speaking. When we get the next opportunity to talk, we will talk about name connections. That's for the next time. But this morning, if you're a child of God, you accepted him as Lord and Savior. It means you are connected to that name. Yes. Your name is linked to him. Somebody says the name is written in the Lamb's book of life. That means you have a right to go to the Father and pray and ask. You have a right. And because you are, you have made yourself connected as sons and daughters. 
you can ask him right now to change some situations that are causing you concern. You can ask him to change that situation. Is it a healing that you need? No, 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 I can't do it for you. But if you will open your mouth right now and begin to ask him, ask him to minister to that headache that is that, 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 that terrible headache that you have. Ask him, ask him to lower that blood pressure so that the doctor will not find an excuse to put you on the blood pressure medication or the high cholesterol. Ask him to reveal, to reveal his healing and his lifestyle to you. Is there a member in your household who is suffering from any kind of debilitating disease? Stop believing what the enemy is trying to tell you. The, the enemy is going to tell you that because of the fall, we are resigned to all of these things and we just have to face it and just know he came that you may have life. Not just ordinary life, but abundantly. More, much more abundant than you think you are. Go ahead and ask him. Say, Father, I come to you on behalf of my, put it there, son, daughter, mother, father, sister, friend, neighbor. And I ask you through the power of your son to cause a divine healing. Go ahead, ask him. Yes, because he says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. That is the God that I have just introduced to you. I have been serving him, oh my goodness, for well over 40 years. I've made mistakes, but he's always there to show me what I did wrong. And once I confess, he forgives. So I pray this morning that every person who heard this word, who has not yet known you as Lord and Savior will accept you this morning, O oh Father, so that your name can take on a new significance. I pray for the believing person who is listening and who, will, who is planning to take this message and share it this week, that you would quicken and empower them so that your word will be that which comes out of their mouth. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, that you will experience more miracles this week with your name carved out on that miracle this week. I thank you, Father, for your word with us, your word to us, your word which is life, your word which we use to name, and we call you God. Now I ask that you would, through the power of your Holy Spirit, Take this message, take this service, take this time, take our thoughts. Have your way now, we pray. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. And all God's people say, Amen.